Hi, I'm Liz Holpin from Pinhole Quilting. On this section, I'm going to cover threading up of the Sweet 16 stationary long arm machine. So in previous videos, I've covered setting up the table, setting in the machine into the table, and a little bit about the accessories. Now we're going to cover the threading up process. So we've got our thread mast. There's actually two cone holders at the back here. As an optional third thread can be put onto a horizontal spool pin that goes into this hole here at the front. To do cones, such as this one by Glide, which is a 5,000 meter trilobal polyester, it will go from the back. When we ship out the machines, we often put a thread, we leave it, after we've done our testing, we leave the thread threaded up so you can see the thread path. I take a, a photo using your own mobile phone if you want to just make a note of how it's threaded up. So the threading up is, is pretty straightforward and it's um, shown in the manual that you'll have, but I'd like to run through it with just a few little hints and tips of things to watch out for. Um, so we don't need to turn the machine on. Let's just go ahead and start threading up. So let's just pull out the existing thread. The difference between a handy quilter like this one and a domestic machine is there's a few major differences. First of all, there are no feed dogs. So that makes it a purpose-built, free motion embroidery or quilting machine. So there's a very smooth stitch plate or um, plate just here, which doesn't have the traditional feed dogs in that you'd have on a domestic. Furthermore, it doesn't have a presser foot mechanism. So when we put the presser foot down on our domestic machine, the tension discs, which hold the thread for the top thread tension, go together. And that puts tension on. But with this machine, our thread tension is permanently engaged. And therein lies a big difference in the way that we thread this up and what we have to do in terms of using it. And also how we approach the whole situation of getting even tension on top and bottom so that we get a perfect quilting stitch. So when we thread it up, <clears throat> we must make sure that we go through all the thread guides. Like a good Italian food recipe, everything is there for a reason. So there's a guide here. If you suddenly get a change in tension, look at the thread mast or here, they're major culprits. Then we've got this pre-tension, there are three holes and we go from the back of the machine to the front of the machine three times. With some glide threads, uh, it's not untypical for, for me and a number of uh, people who use the glide thread on a regular basis to skip the middle hole. So try it with three. If you need to reduce the tension, uh, try it just with two and skip the middle hole. The next thread guide here, this can get pushed around when it's in transit. If that's the case, then you just need to loosen off this little nut. Personally, I prefer to have it a little closer so that the thread that goes into the tension disc is then fed more easily into the tension discs. To get it into that guide, all you need to do is take above and below with the thread and just pull to the back of the machine, like so. You don't have to thread it through. You don't have to get the end of the, th the thread to go through. And the next bit is a very important bit. This is our tension assembly. And it consists of this black knob uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So that's the sort of American mnemonic that we use to recall how we tighten or loosen the tension. There's um, a black knob and there's a spring, there's a disc, and then there's the actual two tension discs. And what we're gonna try and do is get the thread every time we thread up so that it goes between those two tension discs. And the way that I do that, the Sweet 16, because you're seated, it's a little bit easier than on some of the stand-up machines. And what I do is just make sure that I've got it either side by doing this. I'm, I literally floss up and then take the slack up. And then there's a spring. And that spring, in the normal operation of the machine, should go up and down. So it should do this. It was so loose, I must have, oh, I, st I probably just loosened it off. Yeah, it should, that spring, should just go like this, up, down, up, down, like so. 
Now, let's just get that little bit of fluff out of the way. The next element of the threading up process is called the stirrup. So that's this chromed section here. Just take off the end of the thread. And then we take it through the hole of the take up lever and pull. And I recommend that you do pull on it at this point. Just get a sense of that tension. You actually need a lot more tension on this machine than you do when you're so used to threading up your domestic. You kind of think, wow, that's a lot of tension. It's going to break the thread, but it doesn't. It just needs that amount of tension to be balanced with the bobbin tension. This little piggy tail here, you literally just take it to the back of the machine and forward and it'll go in. You don't have to, again, you don't have to feed the end of the thread through. This piggy tail, again in transit, it, what can happen is it can get pushed up against the body of the machine. And I have actually seen it where it's been pushed up so much and the, the customer has used it for a long time. And it's worn a little groove in the metalwork of the machine. So you can loosen off that little nut and then just pull it out. It can actually come out a long way away from the body of the machine and that makes the operation much, much better. So let's just trim that off and now it goes through. There's a little hole above where the needle is. This here is where the needle is and we do that. Now the industrial type of needle that we've got threaded in here, put in here, we are actually facing the hole. The hole should be li literally looking at me. So I can run the end of the thread down the groove of the needle and then without getting any closer than that, I can thread it up. This will be a size 16 needle. So there we have it. That's threading up the sweet 16. And the next section we're going to cover is the bobbin tension. See you on the next video.